Hi, so um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of chat GPT lately doing um, things with words like essays, emails, and so on. But today we're gonna to give it some BI work. Uh, we're gonna give it a spreadsheet like this, which is kind of a typical sales data, and we will let it analyze that data. And uh, the output is going to look something like this, right? So we're gonna ask it to do stuff, to make graphs, and I'll take you step by step through the process of exactly how this works. So let's dive into it. So first I just moved to chat.openai.com. I have a paid account and I'm on ChatGPT4. Uh, and in this interface, you see the paperclip and I just click here and go in and actually just give it the spreadsheet directly. It'll upload it. There you go. And I just say, analyze this data and that's it. And let's see what it can do. So it's doing its thing now, analyzing. It takes a few seconds for it to actually do it. Uh, but it'll come back with an answer in due course. There we go, it's done, let's see what it says. Okay, so it has identified the type of data. So it says that it has year, month, product, sales. We already knew this, of course. Uh, here's a snippet of the first few rows, great, you know, that's fine. Uh, but this is something that we already knew. And so once it's done, we'll ask you to do something a bit more ambitious. Now it's suggesting things that we can do with it. So the first thing it suggests is visualization. For example, I could do the total sales per year and so on. I'll just say, Yes, uh, do a sales trend uh, visualization. Okay, and uh, yeah, let, let it do that. So again, it goes into analysis mode. It already has the spreadsheet, and so it'll just make a graph out of it for us. So let's see what it can do. Just uh, standing by. Now this, by the way, is the new version. It came out last week, and it's, uh, I think the internet is called uh, 4.5, although it still says ChatGPT 4 here. Okay, there you go. I have now sales over time. Now, but I noticed that it has given me the total sales. So, but I don't want this, I want it broken down by product. So it says here, each point represents the sum of the sales of all the products in a given month, right? Uh, so that's all good, but I want it broken by month. So show me separate trends for each product. Okay, so you, you can see it's very interactive, right? So once it has the data loaded, it maintains the context. And so you don't have to keep going back to the original data again and again. Uh, and hopefully this time I'll actually get four different lines and uh, I'll be able to see the products separately. And again, it's doing its thing, analyzing it. And uh, we'll just give it a second to complete that and it's done. Let's see what it has come up with. Okay, there you go, perfect. So now I have product A, B, C, D. You can see that in the key here and uh, each has a separate program. Perfect. So at this point, if you were just looking for a graph, you're done. Of course, you can make this in Excel as well, but you know you can just do it like this. So, so far, so good. And it says the graph above displays uh, the sales and free product, timeline presenting a different product. This can help you identify which products are performing well, blah, 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 and so on. Now, you notice that in each of these, there is this little square bracket thingy where it says view analysis, right? We have it here, we also have it here. We also have it here. We haven't clicked on that yet, but let's take a look at that now. And if I click here, you notice that it's actually doing a Python script to do all this. So what's happening is it actually writes a Python code. It runs the code and it gives me the output, right? So behind the scenes, it's actually using Python for everything. And uh, even if you don't know Python, that's fine. But if you know Python, you can actually copy this code. And towards the end of this video, we are actually gonna do that as well. But for now, let's just carry on. So we noticed that you know, all the products are going up and down, so that's all to the good. But I wanna know which product is really doing well. So I just ask a direct question. Which product, uh, or let's just say, rank the products by volume and by growth, and by, let's see, annual growth rates, right? So there's two ways to look at the uh, sales data. You might wanna look at the total volume, but also you wanna look at something that might be small today, but growing very fast. It's a very, very typical kind of a sales analysis. One of the first few things that you look at when you have a sales trend data. So I'm just gonna ask you to do that. And the interesting thing is, you know, the choice of words, the prompts, I'm not really thinking too much about it. I'm just putting it out there as it comes to me. And so far it is interpreting my uh, queries quite well. And let's see what it can do with this one. So analyzing, 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 and it's done. And let's see what it came up with. Okay, there we go. So it says the product A ranked by, the product ranked by total sales volume are as follows, A, D, C, and B. 
and ranked by average growth rates are C and A, uh, and then B and D. So it, I think that's got that right. Um, the rankings help to understand only which part. So on the one hand, we have the maximum sales of product A, 65,000, uh, but C has got the highest growth rate. Now, if I go back to the graph, you can see that this is the case, right? So C is over here, the black line, and it's not quite top, but it is rising very fast. Now, you could have told this from the graph as well, but now you have it directly as a comparison. You have the exact percentages. Let's see if we can visualize this somehow. Uh, visualize this ranking for me. I have no idea what it'll do. It may, I don't know what kind of graph will show this, but let's see what it can do. So I'm just going off. While it's doing that, let's again look at the code for the previous step. And again, you see that you get some very nicely formatted Python code. There's a lot of comments telling you exactly what it's doing for ranking by volume with some of the precedes. And step by step, each step has comments. So, you know, it'll tell you exactly what it's doing. Okay, that's not too bad. So we have total sales volume by product graph on the left side and average annual growth rate by product on the right side. And yeah, actually that's perfect. I mean, this is exactly the kind of graph that you could just you know, plug into a PowerPoint and uh, in, in your sales report or for your sales conference. So this is actually quite well done. Uh, let's ask you to do one more thing and that's seasonality, right? So for sales data, we already noticed if I go up, that it's sort of going up and down, but it's also going up all the time. And I want to see if there's any seasonality in this data. So I'll just ask a simple question. I, I'm not going to be very fancy about the prompt. I'm just going to say, is there a seasonal, a seasonal pattern? And by the way, it's pretty good at typos as well. Even if you don't spell it correctly, it generally gets what you're seeing. I think I got, yeah, no, it's all right. So let it do that. And again, as usual, I look at the previous point and you can see that it's uh, given me the, yeah, so it's using uh, matplotlib. And again, if you don't know Python, if you don't want to look at the code, you don't have to, but it's there if you want to analyze it, if you want to change it in any way. It's, it's really working like clockwork. So let's look at what it can do for me in terms of seasonal patterns. Uh, almost there, and yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, so this is given me by month. So the bar chart displays the average monthly sales. So it has summarized the month, so January for each of the four months, and I can see that there's a slight dip in the July, August, September, and then it sort of goes up. Uh, however, any significant peaks or troughs in this chart could suggest, <clears throat> sorry, months where sales are consistently higher or lower, indicating potential seasonality. If you need more detailed season analysis, such as breaking down by year or by product, please let me know. Yes, please um, break down by year and product. Okay. So it's you know, not only is it giving me the answer, it's also suggesting the next step. Uh, and as you know, those of you who do this in your everyday work, uh, you can recognize that this is exactly the kind of thing um, that you would end up doing if you were given this kind of spreadsheet. You, or you would ask someone to do it for you. And now you can just sit on chat GPT and uh, just knock yourself out, do as much analysis as you want. So again, uh, let's look at the code as well. Yep, I perfectly commented code here. And uh, let's see what it comes up with in terms of by product. And, by, and notice that I've made a, a typo here, downy rather than down. Uh, it makes no difference. It is going to get it done anyways. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer on this one, but uh, let's see, almost there. By the way, while it's doing that, notice that it says at the bottom, chat GPT can make mistakes. Consider checking important information, right? So they are, okay, there you go. You got an error this time. And without even my doing anything, it's analyzing again. So this is one of the requests where it has gotten stuck. Maybe it is the typo after all, I don't know. But we'll, we'll let it try again. Uh, I've seen this before. Typically, it tries two or three times to correct itself. What's happening behind the scene is it has run a script, but the script hasn't run properly. It's given some errors. Okay, I think it got it right. Here we go. So in the second try, it corrected itself. So now I have it for each year, 20, 21, 22. And uh, for each one, I have it by product A, B, C, and they are stacked bars, one on top of another. And so I can see a sense of these. So I'll just have one last request. Um, can you differentiate the colors a bit more? Shades of green. I don't actually have to say it, but I'm just being polite. 
are hard to tell apart. Okay, so I'll just change the colors for me. And I could go on, right? So you get the sense of, of what it's capable of doing and uh, what, it, what it can do. So you, as you can see, this is pretty impressive stuff. Uh, I think this just uh, takes away a lot of grunt work a lot of mechanical work in terms of turning raw data into analysis and you can actually focus on the results rather than spending all your time actually making these graphs. So hopefully it has changed the colors. There we go. That looks much better. <laughs> so that's very presentable. Just take these, stick them into a PowerPoint. You go for lunch and uh, let ChatGPT run these things for you. So that's what it can do for you. Now, um, I'm actually going to do it. do one more thing here, which is slightly more technical but just to show you how the Python part of it works, because you know the way I see it, there are two or three uses. First of all, it can just do your analysis for you, right? You don't have to look at any Python. If you know a little bit of Python, uh, then you can take this code, plunk it into uh, a Python environment, and I'll just do that in a second, just to, to show you sort of the, how this works. And then you can just uh, make small tweaks to it. You can also double check the logic if you want. Um, and thirdly, if you're learning Python, for example, then this is absolutely a fantastic teacher, right? You just put it out there, let it write the code, look at the results, and then go and study the, the, the Python code that it has come up with, and, and that'll help you improve your own sort of uh, Python as well. So there are many, many uses here. And uh, so now let's look at how this handles, uh, how the Python part of it actually works. So we're gonna take some of this code and actually patch it into a Python notebook and see how that works. Okay, so um, I have here a Python environment. I have a Python notebook ready to go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this data and plug it, some of this code and plug it in there. So I'll take the first prompt, which loads the data. So let's just copy directly, put it in here, control V. And the only change I have to make is to change the path of the file because here the file is local and so it's called data. And I'm just gonna run it and this will load the file. And it is just showing me the first four things, just like it explained to me on the prompt. So, so the data is loaded into the notebook now, and I can just take any other patch and, and just run it. All right, so let's take the second one, uh, copy code. Uh, I'll just add a code block here, put it down and run it. And there we go, that's the graph. And now because it, I have actually the, the source code for it, you know, if I want to sort of change the sales trend over time, it's coming from right here. If I can just say, you know, uh, something else, uh, our super data, I know that's silly, but you know, um, just run it like that, then it says our super data. So I mean, if you know Python, then you have double advantage. So you don't have to go back to the GPT again and again. It's much faster, just tweak it slightly over here. Let's just do one more, maybe the last one. And let's see this one. And uh, yeah, where's the code for this? Here we go. And I, oops, just copy the code, come back here, add another code block, <clears throat> paste it in and run it. And uh, okay, so here's what happened. I missed a step because it's going step by step. And so it's using some of the steps from the previous uh, variables that it defined in the previous steps here. And so without that, it will not run this code. So I have to go step by step sometimes and that's fine. So let's just go to the next one. Uh, let's say this one over here and copy the code here. And instead of this, I'm just gonna go code here and I'm just gonna run that. And this should work. Here we go, this should work. And as you can see, the, the entire code is over here. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, I think that's enough of a demo for how this thing sort of works back and forth. And that's what ChatGPT can do for you in terms of data analysis. So I don't have to tell you how powerful this stuff is. I mean, this is something that would take you at least an hour to do. If you're an expert, maybe half an hour to do, but now we've done it in minutes. More importantly, we have the source code to tweak with. I can use this interface directly, never look at the code. I can look at the code, I have maximum flexibility. I can learn Python. And this is a simple data set, of course, but it could be a lot more uh, involved. And this is today. I mean, we are at the very early stage of uh, AI slash ML for data analysis yet. Imagine this kind of thing getting built into, in fact, I'm pretty sure it'll get built into Excel. Imagine this getting built into your data warehouse directly. And so, you know, everybody uh, would be just able to sort of query the data by talking to it. Imagine it hooked up to a speech synthesizer so you don't have to, to type. It'll just sort of take your voice commands and, and do it. So I think by this time next year, the amount of analysis uh, and the complexity of the analysis that it can handle uh, would be an order of magnitude higher. So, so this is amazing technology. It's opening up pieces of uh, the puzzle 
which were very hard for to approach for large parts of the population. It's democratizing uh, BI, and so it's a brave new world, and it's good to keep up with it. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks.